Hypermania is a personality style characterised by high energy levels, talkativeness and confidence, and a flight of creative ideas. Hypermanics are competitive, and tend to have racing thoughts and a scattered approach to their own experiences and emotions. Unlike people who are truly manic, however, hypermanics maintain high levels of functioning. For example, while a manic writer might be so agitated by mania as to leave out words in his writing or speech, a hypermanic person can function at this elevated breakneck tempo without the quality of their work suffering as a result. Since hypermania often has no obvious downsides, the personality style has been under-researched. To this day, many psychiatrists do not acknowledge it as a problematic condition, since hypermanics often do well in life. Nonetheless, hypermania does tend to come with some definite downsides, if one knows what to look for. The psychoanalytic conceptualization of hypermania holds that hypermania develops as a response against moroseness, anxiety, and negative emotions. This hypothesis has not been borne out by empirical studies, that's to say, when one tries to find out whether hypermanic people are inwardly depressed or struggling with negative feelings, the reports tend to come up negative. But there is a good reason for this. Hypermania is a structural condition designed to ward off these very feelings. One way hypermanics do this is by dissociation. Briefly put, dissociation means the disengagement of oneself from one's experiences, both positive and negative. In the hypermanic personality, however, it is especially the disengagement from negative experiences that is prevalent. For example, if a hypermanic has been socially rejected or embarrassed himself, he might mentally disown those experiences. Typically, the hypermanic will remember these experiences perfectly well. He has simply distanced himself from them in his cognition. It will be as if they happened to another person. Thus, hypermanics may be said to be scattered in the cognitive integration of insight and introspection and identity with regards to their prior actions. Just as hypermanics may disown negative experiences, they may also distort neutral or negatively tinged experiences into positive ones. For example, the hypermanic may want to think of himself as being close friends with another person. But this other person doesn't particularly like the hypermanic, so in conversation, the other person keeps the hypermanic at a distance. In most cases, the hypermanic will understand what is going on perfectly well. He is not delusional. But because this experience does not conform with the hypermanic's positive self-image, he will suppress this insight and distort the experience into a positive one. In psychodynamic terminology, this is known as positive cognitive distortions. The hypermanic sees himself as upbeat and successful and is stimulated by competitiveness. To acknowledge that this other person, with whom they wanted to get close, actually rejected them would be embarrassing and a fly in the face of their positive self-image. Therefore, they distort the experience into something that fits better with that self-image. If asked about it, they will typically say that the two of them had a good conversation or something similar, even though deep down the hypermanic knows that was not really what actually happened. Compensation for these defences can sometimes be seen in the form of overconsumption of food, drugs or sex. That is, the competitive instinct and positive self-image, which has been dented by negative social experiences, may be reasserted through achieving success in the form of new sexual partners who conform to the hypermanic that he has desired, or in the mastery over inanimate objects, such as food and drugs, that are commonly associated with pleasure. As I said, Hypermania is generally regarded as a positive or at least non-negative condition. Being hypermanic also means that a person experiences more happiness and joy in their lives. They can ride the emotional currents of the present moment and elevate these to a higher level of ebullience than is usually the case. Again, their elevated energy, mood and focus on competition means that hypermanics may often do well in life. The American professor of psychiatry, John D. Gartner, has conducted a survey of successful American entrepreneurs and found that 100% of them agreed that they had hypermanic traits. That is, they thought fast, talked fast, had lots of scatterbrained ideas, didn't dwell too much on their failures and negative experiences, and were extremely self-confident and competitive. But on the other hand, they also had problems controlling their impulses, and sometimes exhibited poor long-term judgement and made enemies without meaning to. Hypermanics do not set out to make enemies, but simply tend to acquire them through their rash behaviour and competitive social style. For this reason, 
hypermanics may remarkably often feel that the fault lies with the people who don't like them, and not with anything they themselves did. In their minds, they simply played the game of life, and they are prone to regard it as petty and unfair when others hold their impulse and sometimes inconsiderate actions against them. In short, they have a hard time understanding why other people dwell on such past experiences. As we have seen, one reason for this is that they themselves dissociate quickly and move on. It's in the past now, why worry about it?